Thank you, and welcome back to the uh, final segment of the show today. We're talking to Dr. Lewis Baldwin, and the uh, topic is police and, uh, and the uh, decline in status of race uh, in America. And so, Dr. Baldwin, over the last uh, 10 minutes that we have here, let's give you an opportunity to sort of summarize, in mm -hmm. a real sense, some of the things that uh, can be done yeah. in such a way that we can leave with our audience this morning what they can find and pick out among these options yeah. what they can do in order to uh, help the whole situation yes I, I think we would agree that we are at a critical point in this nation's history uh, this is 2016 and we're still dealing with antagonistic and tense relations between the black community and law enforcement what we need first and foremost are voices of reason and objectivity mm -hmm. uh, we need uh, voices like President Barack Obama uh, and President Barack Obama, of course, is walking a tightrope because he's trying to show, I think successfully, mm -hmm. that he supports law enforcement, mm -hmm. that he understands that without law enforcement, uh, we live in a society characterized by anarchy mm -hmm. and lawlessness. Mm -hmm. But he's also speaking to the issue of uh, police, police misconduct mm -hmm. and the killing of, of, of black men. Mm -hmm. So we need those kinds of voices. Unfortunately, we aren't getting many of those. On the right, the political right, we hear many who are critiquing Black Lives Matter, who are critiquing President Obama, and in many ways, blaming them for the, mm -hmm. the problems that we encounter in terms of, mm -hmm. of the relations between law enforcement and black communities. But they are trying to come up with solutions. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to understand that we have to move in four directions. First of all, we have to uh, emphasize the importance of education. And, and education is very, very important, as Dr. King taught us, and, and as a King scholar, I would mm -hmm. recommend that, is that you change the mind, you enlighten the minds of people mm -hmm. when it comes to education. Religion is important in terms of changing the hearts of people. Then you need legislation and court action. Of course, the kind of laws that will, will, will respect the dignity and worth of all human personality, mm -hmm. not simply policemen, but also African-Americans mm -hmm. and people of other ethnic and racial backgrounds, mm -hmm. and finally, nonviolent direct action. Now, one of the groups that I see today that embodies all of these approaches mm -hmm. uh, to the problem, of course, uh, is Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. They're very much concerned with nonviolent approaches to dealing with the issues of not only racial profiling, uh, police brutality, but also mm -hmm. inequality in the criminal justice mm -hmm. system. And I think we got to deal with all of these issues mm -hmm. if we're going to solve the problem. We've seen over the last couple of weeks not only the killing of, uh, of Philando Castile out in St. Paul, mm -hmm the killing of Alton uh, Sterling in uh, Baton Rouge, but we've seen the killing of police officers in Dallas mm -hmm. and Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to understand that we aren't going to solve these problems that exist between the black community and law enforcement until we take this fourfold approach. Education mm -hmm. that changes the mind, a religion that changes the heart, and you recall when, Doc, when uh, uh, President Obama eulogized those uh, five policemen in uh, Dallas, he talked about the need for a new heart. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mm -hmm. King talked about that in 1968, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we need a new heart, mm -hmm. okay? So you not only change and enlighten the mind, you change the hearts of people, uh, you also, what, in, work through uh, court action and mm -hmm. legislation, mm -hmm. laws mm -hmm. to make Protest. sure mm -hmm. that people's rights are respected. Mm -hmm. Not only uh, people, on a, you don't want to set up a double standard of justice, one for police and one for citizens. It means that all people, the, the rights, the life, the liberty, uh, the dignity and worth of personality of all people mm -hmm. should be respected. And finally, nonviolent direct action. And I see Black Ma Lives Matter as engaging in these kinds of approaches today in order to improve mm -hmm. uh, black community relations with law enforcement. You know, one of the things that I think you'll notice, uh, Dr. Baldwin, and you've probably heard people make some statements in reference to it, is that uh, Black Lives Matter has been maligned. 
yeah. uh, by many people. Exactly. And, and, and I think that uh, we see that organization as trying to accomplish exactly what you laid out there. Exactly. That they are, in a real sense, instead of trying to create a problem, they're, they're trying, trying to, to deal with problem. a problem, solve a problem. Exactly. Yeah. We need to keep in mind that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was accused of creating problems. Mm -hmm. He was accused of initiating violence. Mm -hmm. But what he was concerned about was what? Eliminating violence mm -hmm. and bringing about goodwill and cooperation uh, between peoples of different racial, ethnic, and political, religious backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Black Lives Matter, it's not a black movement. Mm -hmm. It's a movement made up of blacks, of whites, mm -hmm. of LGBT people from the les lesbian, gay, transgender communities, uh, people of different religious backgrounds. Mm -hmm. They are coming together uh, to fight mm -hmm. for equal rights, uh, for justice, uh, not only for people in the police department, but for people in our local communities. And they understand that if you're going to resolve this problem, you need people who speak with the voices of reason and objectivity. Mm -hmm. And you don't see a lot of that on the extreme right. You don't see a lot of it on the extreme left. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so in a real sense, if we could uh, all get behind some idea yeah. in terms of trying to bring about better relationships between uh, the police departments and yeah. the African-American community or minority communities or the police department and other communities That's because right. African-Americans and others Black are not and their brown. own. All of us are affected yeah. by this and if we think in terms of trying to bring about a better relationship and each person commits himself or herself to that idea, you think we might be able to accomplish something? I think we will and, and, and I I would add that the upcoming presidential election in November 2016 will have a great impact mm -hmm. on whether or not we're able to translate certain kinds of ideals and values mm -hmm. in, into a, a system that is beneficial to both uh, black communities or minority communities and the police or uh, uh, law enforcement. Uh, because we need a society in which the rights, the dignity and worth uh, of all no people, persons. Uh, uh, of I course, agree with that. are respected. That's, that's exactly and, it. And, and I read recently where there is an effort in Tennessee to come up with a Blue Lives Matter law, mm -hmm. which increases the penalty for the abuse and, and the killing of police. We need that for all Americans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't want to give the impression that we're setting up a double standard of justice mm -hmm. in America. And too many of us give that impression. We need a standard of justice that benefits all citizens, mm -hmm. uh, that recognizes that people in law enforcement are like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are not above the law. Mm -hmm. uh, they must conform very much to the values, the standards, the laws mm -hmm. uh, embodied in the con Constitution just mm -hmm. like the rest of us. And you know, Dr. Baldwin, I, I, I might be too optimistic in reference to this, but I think that as a historian, you've had an opportunity to see race relations mm -hmm. from slavery up until now. Yeah. And we know that uh, there were atrocities that were committed uh, during these earlier periods. No up question. until now that there would be nothing like that today, yeah. et cetera. And so we, we, we overcame lynching. That's right. We overcame burning. That's right. And we overcame all of these things. And in many instances, when we overcame them, the law um, uh, was often involved with that. I think That's you right. mentioned e Emmett That's Teal. Right. Well, the law was involved with that's that. right. You it's can't you can't engage in those kinds of practices mm -hmm. anymore, lynchings and burnings. And so we need to understand this whole issue in a larger historical context and come up with solutions that involve not only our religious institutions, mm -hmm. but our orders of police around the country, our fraternal orders of police, uh, federal government. And I think we can solve this problem. Otherwise, uh, as Dr. King pointed out, uh, if we don't learn to live together as brothers and sisters, Amen. we will perish together right. and, as fools. And, 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 and I'm optimistic, uh, 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 Dr.